even God has to build with something. I'm just saying. Sorry, Rob. Go ahead. Rob, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I you know, one of the things I appreciate about what Mark brings to the table as a video game programmer, especially now that I'm working on a video game too and starting to figure out how, you know, how to program stuff like that, is if we are able to conceive of these things with our finite, limited human minds, then obviously the creator could have figured out the same thing. Like, when I first started thinking about, the scriptures tell us in multiple places that the moon is a lesser light. It gives its own light. That's what it says in the text. And, you know, the test we're going out there and showing, it doesn't appear to be a reflector because it's giving off completely different light. So I started to rack my brain. It's like, okay, how is this thing giving off its own light? And early on in my investigations, I created a 3D model showing how the moon could be self-illuminating. Now, there are problems with the model. I acknowledge that. But basically, I was able to create a 3D model that still allowed the moon to create its own phases if it was self-illuminating. And right after I did that, I ended up finding, I, don't, I forgot who makes it, Hasbro or somebody, I don't remember who, who makes it, but the moon in my room, you can get it at Walmart, uh, and you know it's a, this half sphere that you can stick up on your wall, and by remote control, you can click it, and it will go through the phases of an illuminated moon in your bedroom. I'm going, well, I mean, if toy manufacturers can figure this out, then, then surely the creator of, of this uh, terrarium could figure it out as well. So figure it out as well. So to, to Mark's point, you know, from a programming perspective, sure, uh, the creator could make these things however he wants. And, and this actually came up in the discussion this weekend in the Q&A, was um, when it talk, the Bible talks about a coming great delusion, a, a great deception that could be so great that even the elect could be deceived by it. Well, if you look at that text, it actually says God sends it. God is the one who sends the great delusion. So I was thinking about that. I was going, well, you know, this is certainly a wonderful candidate for the great delusion because so many people are deceived by the spinning heliocentric globe thing that, I mean, wow. I mean, that's what makes evolution even remotely plausible. The whole ancient aliens thing, you know, all of that is is only really possible with the, you know, Earth in a small corner of an ever-expanding universe idea. Uh, so I thought, what if the creator or the programmer of this simulation set things up in such a way that depending on your preconceived bias and belief system, you could see it either way. In other words, if you, if you go into this fully convinced that we're in a spinning heliocentric ball, you know, a model in an ever-expanding universe, then all of your observations reinforce that belief. But if you go into it with the, the belief that the Bible means exactly what it says and says what it means, then we're in a snow globe, well, I mean, I could say for myself, as soon as I had that seed planted in my head, you know, like the movie Inception, you know, once I had that planted in my head, that's all I see now. I, I, everything I look around, everything looks different. It doesn't look like it used to look like before. So, you know, I'm wondering if that's the way it was all, if this matrix, if you will, was programmed, that it's up to the observer uh, to decide what it is that we're actually seeing. Very interesting, and I know... Uh, Mark, you said something along those lines, even when it comes to the uh, what is surrounding us, some call it a dome, the firmament, which I know are different things, but you've said something along the lines of we may never be able to actually touch it and offer the proof that bald earthers are asking for, uh, because it may move with the perception. Can you kind of go over that a little bit more for those oh, who don't yeah, understand? Yeah. It's a theory, yeah. of course, but well, something yeah, of course. worth there, There's something that, that uh, uh, game, or not just game programmers, but all sorts of simulation programmers have built in over the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years, uh, and that's called a soft barrier. And that is, it's not a hard barrier where you walk up and clunk, you know, you walk into it. It's literally got a pushback. So it's got its own uh, G-force that, that pushes back against you. So eventually you're walking, you're walking, you're flying, or doing whatever, and you realize that you're still walking physically, but you look down and the rock that's sitting next to you on the ground hasn't moved because the forward motion is gone. Uh, and they, they do that so that you don't actually conflict with the actual physical barrier. I know everyone's talked about, you know, a, uh, you know, a glass or a heavy element or a water or a force field or anything like that. Uh, but the, the goal is, is that you don't want anyone to get super close to the, uh, you don't want actually someone to actually be able to walk up and touch it, uh, that it's got its own physical um, properties. It's got its own physics working for it. So, yeah, I, again, it's something that it, it seemed very, very efficient because, again, it, it, at least in the, in the simulation world, it's really annoying to have players or people interacting with it walking up because all they're going to do is pound on the, on the wall. So you just keep them, it's kind of like you're hitting them with a wind and you're pushing them up, uh, away from it so they never actually reach it and they give up and they go back the other way. So. All right, very interesting. I'm yeah. looking right now. Thank you for doing that because it's yeah. a hard concept to explain to someone. Yeah. Oh, by the way, they, they also throw in uh, a little added thing to even mess you up even more. It's called a, um, it's like a digital fog. Uh, where you're walking forward and, and your, your field of vision, it's like a fog that gets thicker and thicker to where literally you cannot see two inches in front of your face, and that's also a deterrent to keep you from, from going forward. Just something like throwing it. 
All right. Anybody else have anything to add to any of this before we potentially go to chat, which moves very fast, but I'm, I've just asked in chat using my cell phone to, uh, to anyone who's watching to ask a question. And address it to the particular panel member. But David Weiss, what did you have to add? Uh, no, I, I was actually just thinking back. I wanted to comment. Mark had um, a guy on from uh, the Armed Services uh, talking uh, about his experience there, but he was also very religious, and uh, he was talking about the Bible a lot. And he brought up a really good point, which um, I, I, it kind of rang with me, that um, the reason that you know baller, ball supporters act so violently when presented with flat earth truth, I call it, um, is because the entire ball earth concept is a satanic concept to separate us from God. And when, you know, when that is influencing you and you are trying to break free, it's kind of like an exorcism, you know, when the priest is coming up trying to throw some truth at the person, they react violently. And, you know, people are reacting um, unlike themselves, uh, very negatively, you know, Going back to Tiger Dan, look at the way this guy's reacting from the, the Tiger Dan we knew earlier. There is some satanic influence in there, and I really can't even believe I'm saying this at this point because I never <laughs> believed in any of this stuff. Yeah, and, and David and I were talking about this morning, and, and he's absolutely right. Find me, and I'm sure all you guys would agree, find me another topic, and I don't care what it is, you know, church versus state, abortion, take your pick. I have never seen a topic generate this much polarization before to where and you'd think it's just two words it's just flat earth where people are just swinging in 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 the forums i mean just going at it so I, it's just amazing to me yeah it's it's like they're locked in and trying to break out of it is actually more painful than uh, yeah when we're trying to accept it you're going through pain try trying to get your your head in the flat earth world it's amazing okay so we're going to see